So can everybody hear me? Clint, can you see the slides? Everybody buy their tomatoes on the way in? Folks, welcome to my second annual town hall meeting. As you can see from our agenda, I'm going to start things off by thanking a few people. As I did last year, I've got a few apologies, though I'm sure I'll miss a few more. I'm going to state some of my personal goals. I'm going to review the survey results with a comparison to each of the last two years. I'm going to go over this past year relative to all of our amenities and services leading into, a look into uh, 2020. I'm going to then touch on several of the membership programming changes for 2020, show a comparison to our competitive set <coughs> as it relates to golf, amenities, prices, that include, including uh, dining. And at the end, I'm going to open it up to questions. And any questions, I'm going to turn it over to my management team here. Okay, from a thank you standpoint, First, I want to thank all of you. Your support, your suggestions, observations, feedback, even a few criticisms at times, they really are helpful to me and to our team. I really do my best to listen. And with more than 6,000 members, and that includes spouses, you can imagine the number of emails that I do receive, particularly after one of my letters gets to all of you, email. I really try to answer everything that comes my way, and if I didn't, believe me, consider it more of an oversight than the fact that I'm ignoring you. I really try to be as trans transparent and honest as possible with you, even though at times I know it may not always be the answer you want to hear. But, I figure my honesty is probably better than me trying to appease you and, uh, and, and blow smoke, you know, just so you can get the answer you want to hear. Next, our committees. And uh, Dave's got a slide there that will show uh, the committee structure, the advisory committee, and the uh, committees. Uh, we've got three committees, House Committee, Sport Committee, and uh, the golf committee. The committees, they really do, they, they try to guide us and we take their feedback and at times we ask the committee members to go out to their friends, to their acquaintances, their golf partners, to get their input on questions that uh, um, may be a particular issue to address. That way it, it allows us to make an informed and educated decision. Believe it or not, there are actually times when we get this input and we will reverse our decisions that were made or our decisions that we're considering. Take, a, take in fact, the uh, range ball issue that came up early in the, or earlier in the year. We've got the advisory committee that is chaired by Barry Barnett. As I said, we've got three committee chairs. Sport committee, Scott Hettinger. Golf committee, Rich Fisk and the House Committee, Sue Fagan. Each of those committees has two other members that are on the advisory committee. Meetings are normally held each month for all of the three committees, and the advisory committee and the executive committee are held in the alternating months. Advisory, um, as you can see there, the executive committee is the uh, three chairs, the advisory chair, and uh, President of the POA, Jerry Iverson. We do post the minutes on the website, and from the committee members on those three committees, we try to use that as our guide for who would be good candidates for our uh, advisory committee going forward. <coughs> Next, a huge thank you to the Truett Associates. During our peak season, we have roughly 300 associates. Finding quality staff is a challenge to say the least. It is perhaps our greatest challenge, 
But I feel thankful and fortunate to have the team and the family and staff that we have. They truly do make or break the success of our operations, and they're a huge reason for the, for the positive results on the survey that uh, I'll touch on in a little while. They are what helps to make St. James and the clubs the special place that it is. And their efforts are greatly appreciated. My management team, guys wanting to stand up, missing a couple here, but uh, I said it last year and I'm going to say it again. I'm so fortunate to have taken on a, my position with such a professional and qualified management team in place. In the club world, it is not common for a general manager to take a new position and for there to be as little turnover in that management team as we have had here. So I give them tremendous credit for them adapting to my management style over the last couple of years. So those who are up here, Dave Lynchball, my assistant, he kind of guides me in, in the, any issue he can provide like pages of background on it because he's been here for 14 years. Dustin Strickland, our director of agronomy, how about the undertaking he's had since he got here last year? <laughs> <last day? laughs> when both of us signed on for our positions, nobody told us what we were heading for. <laughs> director of golf, KJ, Dave Kiyomi. Lindsay Krause, she's been here for 11 years. <laughs> Executive chef, that's really kind of the one new hire replacing uh, somebody on the management team before. And then uh, our executive chef, Keith Holderai, he arrived here in April. Our controller, Cindy Weaver, she's been here eight years. And our membership director is Becky Jones, who's been here 25 years. <laughs> who arrived here last year too. Thank you all. They made my job a whole lot easier. True Corporate. Troon is the largest management company for clubs for a good reason. They really are that good. The support, the expertise, the resources that they have really make a difference in our ability to do our jobs. We wouldn't be able to do all that without all of them, not to mention the financial resources since they uh, purchased the clubs that they provide for us. Truman's exec Executive Vice President Bruce, Bruce Glasgow, he helped or orchestrate the, uh, the purchase back in the early 2018. He's my boss. He provides tremendous support for me. During the past year, on multiple occasions, we have reached out to Truman Corporate and call upon their specialists in agronomy, course design, finance, insurance. Insurance, I, there was a stretch here where I was talking to him about like every day. <laughs> IT, food and beverage, membership and marketing, interior design. They are really helpful to us. Okay, on to my apologies. The <laughs> weather. It wasn't as bad this year, but yes, another hurricane, been here two years, two hurricanes. Thankfully, this year's was not nearly as damaging as Florence, and the three to four day shutdown that we did have was probably more related to just being prepared and, uh, and precautionary. But yeah, I'll take, I'll take the blame for it. Not knowing everybody's name, it's, this one's a hard one. If I still don't know your name, don't take it personal. With so many members, it really is a work in progress, and I'm getting better, but I often feel badly because all of you seem to know my name, and I know, you know, <laughs> by wearing the suit jacket and tie, it's easy for you to recognize me. You know, I mean, if I dressed in golf clothes, nobody would ever really know who I am out there, right? Um, last, the Eagles. <laughs> Isn't it great to listen to the Eagles fight songs so early in the morning? Alright, that's enough. So anyway, you know, 
like last year, I apologize to the Giants fans. This year, I've got to say I'm sorry because karma comes back to you. Right? I mean, my Eagles are 4-4, four and, four and I think we're getting better. I think we're going to be okay. All right. On to the real stuff. Our goals. My goals really aren't that much different than when I stood up in front of you a year ago. I do my best to provide good communication to you with complete honesty and transparency. I touched on that earlier. I try to do this through my regular emails to you. You know, you figure I, I try to send an email about once a month. You know, when, when I feel as though there is enough material to get to all of you, then, you know, I know that's about the time to, uh, to send an email, and it turns out usually about once a month. We do a weekly email for pretty much each of the departments. One goes out fitness, F&B, events, golf, and tennis. Tennis and racket sports. I try to stay as visible as I can, trying to attend different events, club events, member events. I've even tried to get nine holes in occasionally just so that I can experience the same frustrations that you do out there. And KJ and Flitch, they will both testify that I've shared those, uh, that frustration. I try to create a positive atmosphere among our associates, feeling as though it all starts with me and it, should, and it filters down to all of them. This week, uh, right now, we have our Associate Appreciation Week. Tomorrow we've got uh, our full associate meetings, two of them, to announce Associate of the Quarter awards. And at the end of this week, we've got a, an event off-site to uh, show our appreciation to all of them with a you know, movie in Middleton Park and the uh, barbecue and the games and the fun for, uh, for families. One of management's goals is to build a winning team and to create that growth potential within the staff that we have, whether it be within true, you know, whether it be within the clubs, or even on you know grander scale with the, with true corporate. This past year, one of our huge goals was the bunker project, the greens over a reserve, and getting that completed on time, which we did. July 31st, we reopened our 81 holes. Thank you. Dustin and superintendents here. Another goal is improving food and beverage. And you'll see from survey results, you know, so a little bit mixed on that one. We've made some good strides in some areas, and uh, you know, consistency remains one of our big uh, uh, challenges. Lastly, working closely with the POA, you know, Jerry Iverson, the town, to provide the best experience possible for the members and residents <laughs> within the community. Jerry Anderson is president of the POA, Mayor Gene Tunner, Dan Kingsbury, who represents the developer. They've been great to work with, and we try to get together you know, on a monthly basis, sorry I missed the last meeting, um, to keep each other updated on what's going on in all of our worlds. Okay, action items from, for 2019 from the 2018 survey. First, dress code. Now I'm going to touch on this one a little bit later because we know the, uh, the, the dress code question that was in the survey, but this was a topic among all three committees, and you will see an email letter go out towards the end of the year, which we, you know, each of the committees tried to be as consistent as possible in dress code and what is appropriate in their respective areas. Non-member use. We address this. We're going to be more attentive, more vigilant in trying to prevent non-member usage of the amenities. On the golf side, we've had the pros become more visible, walking the driving ranges, trying to introduce themselves as a way also to determine whether those on the driving ranges are eligible golf members or not. We put in key card access over the Members Athletic Club to prevent non-members from using the facilities. Seaside Pool, 
probably remains somewhat of a challenge just because there's four entrances. I think we've gotten better. We increased the number of monitors over there to try to check. You know, that's still probably a little work in progress to, uh, to, to be even better, and we'll work on that one going into 2020. Uh, we increased the day's hours of operation over at Seaside Grill. Pickleball, one of the huge goals was really getting this going. We have, you know, as I think I said last year, we identified the spot. We are now in the process of clearing the land. We've gone through all sorts of hurdles with permitting. Tomorrow there is a meeting between our engineer and the state to get the approvals for the land, stormwater permit uh, approvals, and to set up a site visit, which should be our last hurdle. Once that's done, and we've already started clearing the land, construction will begin. We're looking at probably you know, kind of a four to five month process uh, to, uh, to get that complete. Uh, and I'll touch on this that a little bit later too. Sport, uh, social and sport members, last year we limited the number or we reduced the number of allowable rounds for social and sport to 12 and 30. But we also, in the mid year, listened to some of the comments coming our way and we made some changes to allow them to call day before or day of to make a tea time and it would not count against their allowable rounds. We finished all 81 halls. Bunker project and the grass uh, um, introduction, you know, installation of the Bermuda grass at reserve. <coughs> we introduced open table for our uh, reservation system for dining earlier in the year, so that now you can make a reservation at any of the uh, four clubhouse restaurants. With that, we also improved our mobile app, so you can use your mobile devices, your phone, to make that res the reservation. Earlier in the year, for the golfers, you know some of the nightmares we had with our golf carts. So about halfway through the year, we changed them out. Truman was able to negotiate, they were able to negotiate with the club car. So half of our fleet got replaced. That has been a tremendous help. The other half will get replaced in the early 2020. All the pool furniture accessories, they were placed at Players and Founders Pool. That made a huge positive difference. We have a new shade structure being constructed at Founders Tennis Courts. Still, it's been a while. It has, it, we have had one hurdle after another. I don't want to share all the gory details, but it, it has not been easy from the start. From Flinch handing a check to the people who were building it back in February, and, and the check was in Flinch's room that caught on fire. So it all started back then. <laughs> there were like burn marks on the check as he was handing it. And lastly, as I speak, we've got new cardio equipment and strength training equipment being installed over at the uh, Members Athletic Center. And that, that's a big deal. That's a good one. All right, survey results. Hard to believe, but this year we had returned 2,455 surveys. That is a huge number. When you take a look there, you see that represents 35% more than last year. Now, more than 600 more. The year before, there were like 1,100, but as Flinch reminded me, that would be sent it to like the households. I know that didn't go over real well. Um, but anyway, so, so we went from like 1,100 surveys two years ago to uh, the, more than 2,400 this year. That is terrific. What that means to me is all of you care. And you're more than willing to share your thoughts on everything club related. I appreciate Dave's work as he's been going through all of the comments so that we can arrange them in such a way that uh, summary, summarize them to give them to the department heads with action items for the coming year. As in the past, resident members represented about 90% of the surveys return. Golf, rep, golf members and were uh, sport members. The key metric that we 
look at is the NPS score. And this year's NPS was roughly the same as last year. 41 this year, 42 last year. Good news is, two years ago, it was 16. So still a tremendous jump in, the, uh, in satisfaction. When drilling down more closely by department, golf course conditions, golf operations, both rated very high with a, uh, with a strong improvement to last year. Players continues to uh, stay as the highest rated and reserves saw the greatest improvement. Food and beverage, it roughly stayed the same. I look at it, we had quite a few comments about Founders Club and the other clubs and restaurants. They tended to improve a little bit. Founders went down. We kind of heard that even before the survey went out. And a new menu has just been introduced over at Founders that began yesterday. So we're looking to make the uh, positive changes over at Founders now too. But with food and beverage, and I'll always sit here and tell you, it is a work in progress, it is a challenge. Consistency always remains the biggest challenge, and that's, uh, that, that, that is really what we work hard to achieve. Um, dress code. The results show that the membership is really pretty split on allowing denim, versus not allowing that. It was a 55% in favor of making a change, but I'll be honest with you, with it that close, I'm not willing to make the change. More people, the stronger comments tended to be from those opposed to making a change. At it. We do have five restaurants, six if you include Seaside, but we've got five restaurants. Three of them allow denim, two of them do not. One of them is open seven days a week. So at this point, we, uh, we will not be making a change there. <coughs> All right, on to our amenities, starting with golf courses. As I mentioned earlier, we replaced the greens at reserve from Bedgrass to Bermuda, which is consistent with what we have at the other three golf courses. We have been extremely pleased with the way it has grown in. They are, the, the greens are not as firm as what we thought they might be, so they are holding the approach shots better. The speed of the greens, we got up to Somewhere in the, what, 12 range? 11, 11 for member guests. That will kind of get slower again now with the winter approaching, but uh, we were real pleased with the way uh, the greens grew in. We bought covers for all the reserve greens, so we now have covers for all 81 halls. Hopefully we don't have to use them. Last year we were fortunate, only needed them once. And that wound up probably more precautionary. Our eight and a half month bunker project was completed at the end of July. And again, hats off to Dustin and his team for managing the project. And again, the early returns have been very positive. During the project, we also improved drainage, sight lines, and tee boxes. <coughs> Needless to say, it is a wonderful thing to have 81 holes open again. As you're well aware, Hurricane Florence took quite the toll on our tree population, particularly at Members Club. You drive around Members, it's pretty, it, it, it is pretty noticeable the uh, number of trees that have been taken down. I'm sure Dustin can give you a more exact number, but it's safe to say it's in excess of 2,000 trees around the uh, clubs that have been taken down. Kind of an indirect hit tied to the uh, hurricane was the infestation of beetles. Two different beetles, and, and we drove around and saw the damage and, and what is happening with the trees. And that was kind of our last tree takedown that was the result of the beetles. We don't expect more tree takedowns than what we have, but we will be doing another uh, spray of the insecticides in uh, December, January. Yeah? Okay. Last year, largely due to the hurricane, 
we did not oversee. And I know this one, uh, this one created a little bit of debate. We were real pleased with the results that we saw last year in the, and again, I'll call them off months. I'll call them uh, kind of the three to four December through March time frame. <coughs> but we really do feel strongly that this decision is in the best interest of the members. You know, and we will not be overseeing again, I've put that out in the uh, emails to you. We're confident that we will be able to manage this off-season well and provide good conditions with you know, the, the technology, the, uh, the, the pigments and the paints and the, uh, uh, the spraying that uh, the uh, golf course maintenance team will be doing. Not overseeding has also played a big role in the conditions that we have now or that, we, uh, that we've had as we head into this off season. The rye grass, when it's there, really does impinge on the ability for the Bermuda to grow. And with it not there, it really allows the Bermuda to become just healthier and, and, uh, and grow in better. One of the other benefits of not overseeding is it does allow Dustin and, and his team to refocus their attention on a lot of the detail work around. One of our plans for 2020 is to increase the number of course maintenance days. This will begin in the month of April, after the daylight savings time change. And what this will entail is closing each course two days per month to allow the golf course maintenance team to focus on the detail work. We will also be extending the verification days to four per course. So what this means when it's all said and done is there will be about 76 days where a course will be closed. One note to be aware of is the overseeing or not overseed decision, it was not made in the interest of saving money. A lot of the money that was not being spent on overseed is being spent on other things. We went through our budget process a few weeks ago, and Dustin could not have been happier as he walked out of the meeting with a couple hundred thousand more dollars to spend and, uh, and use to make the golf courses better. In addition, uh, approval was made for a number of pieces of equipment, uh, totaling more than a million dollars for uh, the golf course maintenance team, which again, is replacing some of the old equipment uh, with new, and that all helps. Golf operations. First, a congratulations to our 2019 men's and women's champions, Rich Chapman, Barbara Sauter. I can't go without congratulating Mr. Dewey either. He had two hole-in-ones, like in the last two weeks. I don't know if I've gotten close to any of them. How's he getting two? After he's 80. Should I announce that too? <laughs> um, from a staffing point, one of our best moves this past year was, uh, was promotion of Alan Hilton to the head golf professional over at Towns. He does an awesome job. He, uh, and he was actually recognized as uh, our uh, manager of the year for uh, 2019. Uh, 2018 uh, at uh, last year's holiday party. Again, this year we held a tournament to commemorate a, the, the opening of golf courses. All right, so it was the opening of our 81 holes. So we had it at the reserve club. And as we did last year, the winning team was rewarded with a trip to the Troon Cup at Indian Wells in December. We have one more tournament this season with the Nicholas Cup happening in, uh, on November 9th. And with its completion, we will be able to announce the winners of the uh, 2019 Player of the Year for Men and Women. One of the more controversial topics this year was the 85 rule. And there's like two 85 rules, so I'm not, I'll, I'll go through both of them. One was the 85 rule having to do with handicap posting. 
and that was uh, through the uh, handicap committee, which increased from the requirement of 70% of your scores to be posted to 85% of the scores in order to be eligible to play in the tournaments. There was a little bit of pushback early from a few, but I think pretty quick everybody got on that same page and there really are not many who are not needing that, that posting uh, for tournaments. And uh, you know, between Keith Lee as chair of the Handicap Committee working with our staff, Robert Stark, he's been uh, uh, working closely in making sure all of the scores are in and the percentages are uh, there as they review it. All right, the other 85 rule had to do with which teams you play from, green or white for the men, and it was a combination of age, all right? No younger than 70, with a handicap plus your age totaling 85. If you total 85, that gave you the ability to play from the green teams. I'm going to touch on kind of how that is going to be addressed in 2020 in, in just a moment. Um, I mentioned earlier about the social and sport with the uh, allowable rounds and how that works. And lastly, I want to recognize our assistant pro over at Founders Club for the uh, charitable work that he did in raising about $10,000 for the Folds of Honor program with his 100 hole event at Founders uh, early last month. All right, so 2020 golf operations. There's big change coming our way in the way handicaps are, uh, are being done. Currently, we have net golf, and that is changing to the world golf handicap system. What we are doing in 2020 is signing on with Carolina Golf, Carolina Golf Association. Carolina Golf Association will give us the ability to go with gin, which many of you may have been familiar with prior to coming here. So with the gin handicapping system, what that's going to do, along with being a part of Carolina Golf, is they are going to be coming here and re-rating all of our holes. By re-rating all of our holes, before they get here, we are going to complete all of the tee boxes, okay? So all of the red tee boxes where you see plates in the uh, fairways are going to be completed. We have Ron Despain, who is Troon's golf course design specialist, coming out. He is going to take a look at the work that has already been compiled. Again, Keith Lee put a lot of time into it, but that work is going to be handed over to uh, Troon Corporate so that he can come up, we can come up with six different tee boxes. Roughly, I don't know, call it 400 yard, four to 500 yard differences between each of them. That will allow us to eliminate the 85. Because the assumption is when we're re rated, all that handicapping will be correct. It will not happen until May 1st, which will be called the start of our tournament season. The only tournament that will be impacted with that one on the men's side is the match play tournament, and the match play tournament will get pushed later in the year. Did I cover everything? Oh, I did not cover one thing. See, the most important thing. With the handicap, with it, going with the Carolina Golf and the uh, gin handicapping system, there will be a $20 per person fee per year for the uh, for those who want their handicaps kept. And that will get filled out uh, sometime in March, April of the uh, next year. We are coming up with another, uh, looking at ideas for another tournament next year. That will help to determine a, uh, who, who, what force it would go to the Truman Cup. One of the ideas that we've touched on, but uh, we are far from uh, uh, finalizing that idea, is perhaps a neighborhood cup, something where you know, we have some 54 neighborhoods within. Is that the right number, somewhere close? 
50-something neighborhoods within the plantation and maybe trying to take a portion from each neighborhood. And, you know, we may have a few fights on our hands within the neighborhoods to figure out who that portion might be. But maybe again, we're, we're starting that process of trying to figure out to uh, you know, a fun tournament to uh, uh, come up with who would, uh, who would play in the uh, trophy contest. MGA and LGA, the one change we're looking at next year is to have them at different golf courses um, each month. So MGA would be at one golf course in that given month. LGA would be at a different golf course in that month. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the remaining half of the cart fleet will be replaced in early 2020. And one of the things we are looking at is the possibility of an indoor learning center. So we are getting some quotes on that, and we'll be looking at it more closely too um, with the PGA show in, uh, in January. Golf round comparison. Currently we are tracking to finish the year close to our previous high in rounds played which was the uh, 177, 594 in 17. That's a big number, particularly when you consider the, uh, the fact that uh, we had 918 holes out of play for the first seven months. As in the past, you can see that roughly 90% of our rounds are golf member rounds. We made that much more of an effort early in the year too Especially during, you know, during those first seven months, to limit any guest play, so that we could focus on member play. Our food and beverage operations. I mentioned earlier, our biggest change on the staffing side was hiring our executive chef Peter Holderide. He has transitioned in well, and uh, I'm real pleased with his first six months here. We've also had some changes to four of our five restaurant chefs. Earlier in the year, Anthony Weiss was promoted from the sous chef at Players Club to our chef, head chef at Founders Club. Just in the last couple of months, we promoted Chef Brandon Mickey, who was the chef at Members Club, to be the chef at Reserve Club. That's a big deal. Reserve Club is another restaurant where we have seen some uh, challenges in consistency, both food and service. I think moving Brandon to Reserve will be a huge boost for that restaurant. He has done an awesome job in impressing with beer club dinners. I've said the beer club dinners, in my opinion, are one of the best menus, creative menus that we have um, within the clubs. And I know he is looking to take that creativity over to Reserve. And again, he is a known quantity, particularly not only at Members Club, but uh, with all the banquets that happen over at Members Club, all the neighborhood groups. So we moved him to Reserve. He follows Gary, who is the uh, restaurant manager over there. I think the two of them will make a really good team over there. At Members, to replace Brandon, we hired Jason Talbot, who had, did a great job with his first beer club dinner with some help from Brandon. So he has worked uh, well in transitioning in there. And the sous chef over members who worked under Brandon has been a big help over there. He's staying there and plans for him to stay there. That's Mojave. Uh, lastly, we are in the process of finalizing a new chef over at Tommy's, and I expect that to happen within the next couple of days. We're that close. Uh, so we're excited, we'll be excited about that, introducing a new menu over there also. With that, I can't forget our most consistent restaurant, which is Players. The one restaurant where there hasn't been a change in chef, and there hasn't been a change in chef over there for I don't know, seven, eight years. And uh, Augusto does an awesome job over there, and a reason for their consistency is Augusto and the team over there. This year, we signed on with Open Table, which allows you to make reservations online. We do continue to hear, and I saw right up last night in one of our end of days, that not all the members are familiar with the fact that they can make reservations online. Again, on the one hand, I'm always going to tell you, we will take walk-ins. But at the same time, if you know you're coming, I would strongly encourage you to make the reservation. 
it ensures that we're going to have a table for you. It also helps us in our own preparation for both staff and uh, preparation out of the kitchen. With the open table, as I mentioned before, you can now go online on your phones to make your reservations. And we've seen, we, we have seen a definite jump in the number of people making reservations, but there are still some out there that uh, uh, say, oh, I didn't know you could make a reservation. This past year, we started the process of finding a food truck. This process will be completed <coughs> so that we have it going into next season. We had Troon's F&B specialist here with us last week, helping to finalize those plans from the design of the truck. We're finalizing the name, the menu itself, and as we get the final plans with all that, I will report back to you. The plan is for the food truck to largely be used at, you know, I'll say the pools, Founders Pool, Players Pool. We, we are talking about perhaps for neighborhood events, uh, you know, on the banquet side, and we haven't gone there yet, but another possibility perhaps is uh, um, Seaside at the Beach. But that takes permitting and all that, and we haven't gotten that far. But, it, but that's on our mind also. Um, this past year we've hosted, and it was a goal going in, to have more member events or, or more of a variety of member events. So we still have some of the traditional. We've got our main event, Lobster Night, which is coming up in the next uh, in the next month. We've had trivia nights, karaoke nights, Italian nights. Even this past Saturday, we did a, a you know we've done our NFL football games on Sundays at Founders. We did a college football game this past Saturday, much to the delight of the Ohio State fans, much to the chagrin of the Wisconsin fans. <clears throat> challenges I talk. Consistency is our biggest challenge on the food and beverage side. Our other challenge is really trying to regain some of that popularity over at Founders. So I, again, I'm hoping that the uh, change in menu is going to help with that. Uh, summer social events, you can see we did the beer and shrimp festival, monthly poolside concert series, live entertainment on Wednesdays, Friday night float night, when this was the first year that we had it every, well, virtually every Friday, perhaps with the exception of a couple of the holiday weekends. Um, and it was a huge hit. And the uh, last splash karaoke. We are currently preparing for a busy fall season. We've got the main event on November 15th, with the uh, lobster night. We have a chef's table event featuring <laughs> Chef Peter on November 20th. And of course, we've got Thanksgiving, which you have three options with Thanksgiving. One is a menu, dinner menu at Players Club. One is takeout at Reserve. And the last is delivery. Flitch, next slide. <laughs> who, wouldn't, <laughs> who wouldn't want these two handsome guys delivering your turkey? I had no idea this slide was there. <laughs> the camera somehow slipped it in. Remember that on evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lindsay was the culprit. <laughs> Lindsay was the culprit. Um, and it's not too early to start thinking about New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, we have the uh, three of the four clubhouses open with different formats for that night. So in 2020, I talked about staffing a little bit. Again, we looked to supplement our current staff with the internationals. We had 12 of them this past year. They are a huge help to our crew. We had six front of the house servers, six back of the house cooks. Huge help to us. We're also looking to incorporate some uh, university uh, hospitality program interns. Again, we hope to incorporate a new mix, some new ideas into the uh, social programming. The wine club will be returning in 2020. You should be getting an email on that in the next week. 
Uh, it will be a yearly program as we had in the past. Talked about the food truck and making that happen. We will be replacing chairs in the uh, Reserve Club sunroom. So you're not sitting like so low in the chair. Uh, also, from a staffing standpoint, with the increase of business that we've had in the past year, we will be hiring a second assistant food and beverage director. And their focus will largely be on training, training, on training in front of the house. Okay, racket sports. On a sad note, we are losing Rob Courier, or we have lost Rob Courier, the assistant, uh, uh, Brian's first assistant. Rob was awesome. He got married. <laughs> His wife is in Durham. That's a long commute. Probably not the best for a relationship. So Rob has gone to Durham. We are in the process of finding a replacement. Hope to have that finalized in the next several weeks, I'll say. Greg Weimer, in the meantime, has been promoted to first assistant. And Greg is also our uh, lead pickleball instructor. He, reserved, he received his certification in pickleball instruction earlier in the year, and he is now similar to tennis, where you evaluate and then you come up with um, your rating of 3.0s, 3.5, 4.0s. Doing the same with pickleball, as the Pickleball Association is forming, and they are uh, um, playing in outside tournaments against other uh, other clubs and organizations. So that is happening. I'm a little afraid. Pickleball is another thing that I get out there and share the same frustration as the pickleball members. And one thing I don't want is Greg evaluating me right now. <laughs> the club's hosted four doubles nights, four pro doubles nights with regional pros competing in an exhibition format for the membership and enjoyment. First three were at Seaside when the grill was open over there. Most recent was at Founders this past Friday. And it worked real well at Founders. Uh, we, we had pizzas and we had a bar, we had a server in the area, and um, it, it was very well received. And we're talking about how to structure next year, and we're, we're, we're looking perhaps at doing one every other month, maybe having them two at Founders on either end and then two at Seaside. Um, we had talked about the shade structure earlier. I do anticipate it to be done. My goal is to have that done before the, uh, the tennis uh, annual meeting. But I also schedule my vacation around that tennis annual meeting, so that if, uh, if it's not done, then Flinch could be there. Um, as mentioned earlier, we talked about pickleball. Our goal with the pickleball is to be ready for next season. <coughs> As I said, it takes four or five months to complete, but we anticipate the uh, final approvals happening in the next, uh, uh, say the next month. We do have a layout of the pickleball courts, and we are working closely with Scott Hattinger and uh, some of the pickleball representatives to make sure not only does that work, but the, uh, the courts themselves and the construction of the courts, how all that is, uh, we're working with them to make sure it's within their uh, approval. For next year, Players Club tennis courts are scheduled to be laser graded. This past year, Seaside courts were uh, laser graded. Similar to the SJTA, a pickleball association is being, has been created. They already have somewhere close to 300 members. And so we'll be assisting them, as we do with SJTA, on uh, organizing players' events. We're talking about uh, finding the good replacement, replacement for Rob. We are also looking at replacing the lighting at Founders with LED lights. And as I said, we are going to have a shade sale in 2014. <laughs> Fitness and wellness. The most exciting news I've got there is the fact that we do have the cardio and strength training all being installed right now at the MAC. We have over 75 different classes currently between the MAC and Signature Wellness. With our improved app, 
Members can make reservations for these classes online. So if you're not aware of that, talk to Sean, talk to Heather, and they will help uh, work you through it. If you're not, uh, if you have issues with figuring out the app, Kim Adams, who is recording this session, is our director of communications, and she will be more than happy to help you out. We changed our opening time from 6 o'clock a.m. to 5.30 at the MAC. And as I mentioned earlier, too, we have uh, made it card entry access at the MAC now. All three outdoor pools had furniture added. And this past year, we increased the hours and the staffing for pool monitors at Seaside, along with the towel service. As I look to 2020, the dehumidifier at the MAC will need to be replaced. We will also be replacing those doors that lead in. There's, I think, four sets of doors that are old and they get rusty every time, you know, within weeks after we paint them. So those are getting replaced along with some of the windows. Swimming pools, we are going to be moving and the outdoor shower off of the deck to allow for better drainage. And again, we have budgeted for more hours for the pool monitors so that we can be that much more attentive to members coming in and members following you know, the rules of the pool. A couple things that are being discussed at the committee level, sport committee level, is looking for perhaps one of the outdoor pools to be adult only and one of the pools to allow floats. So again, this that's one where I ask the sport committee to go out and talk to friends and those that they know that, that use the pools to see if that's something that's worth doing. Last thing is we're considering a shade structure, and I know that, that those are like bad words right now, but we are considering a shade structure over the staging area over at uh, Seaside. Cool. Membership. We have some stats through September 30th. 163 new memberships against 120 resignations, so plus, plus 43. We have seen 84 non-residents become residents during the end of last year. We continue to host new member receptions. We had one last week with about 25 couples attending. We are working hard to create a more comprehensive welcome and orientation package for new members. Two weeks ago, we had Member Appreciation Week. Each day of the week, well, say Monday through Thursday, a different amenity was featured. With golf, we had Demo Day and Sales in the Pro Shop. With the food and beverage, we had live lobsters for sale, along with sharpening of knives. We did massages for fitness. And what am I missing? Racket, uh, with racket tennis, uh, we had clinics there. For Relay of Life uh, charity, Chantel has been our liaison, working closely with, the, with that group and the uh, different fundraisers they have during the course of the year. Membership stats, again, we've seen an increase. 30 in golf, 50 in sport, slight decrease in social, but a bigger decrease in house members. And the house members is more of an aging out uh, than anything else with that decrease. Um, resident members now represent 73% of our total members compared to 70% a year ago. Member homes represent roughly 75% of all resident homes. Last thing, we grew about 1% in our uh, total membership, new members. So for, 20, uh, for 2020, some projections per the developer, they anticipate approximately 300 resales, and there will be another 40 through outside realtors. Currently, there are about 800 homes without St. James memberships. Again, translating to about 75% have memberships. One of the projects we're working on currently is a kind of rebranding new logo, and I'll report back to you on that as we make more progress, working with corporate on that <coughs> design. Clubhouse renovations. A while ago, we 
finished founders, and it took a while. It was not the way we drew it up. For all of the HVAC, we did the exterior painting, we finished the uh, railing on the deck. We still have three to go, and a lot of that uh, is, is some of the work I'm doing uh, back and forth with insurance as we try to figure out which one's next. The likelihood is we're talking about players in reserve next with members being last. Members requires the most amount of work. It is the oldest of the three remaining. And our goal would be really, for as long as it took at Founders, the goal and what we talked with contractors about is making this, each of those two players in reserve happen within about a two-week time frame. Hope to know more on that soon. But I've been saying that soon for, for the last couple of months. All right, 2020 membership programming updates. Effective January 1, pretty much all three categories are going to be right around 3%. Golf dues, uh, I'm sorry, golf membership will increase by slightly less than 3%. Sport dues will increase by slightly more than 3%. Social dues will increase by right around that 3% number. The biggest difference is the senior category, and the senior category is more than the 3%, but it is the last big jump for seniors because it gets seniors to the stated 75% of the golf members. On the golf side, nothing will change as far as sport and social members to the 12 and 30 rounds that we have in place and their ability to make tee times day before or day of. The annual card plan is going to increase by $10 per month for a family, $5 per month for single golf members. Daily card fees will increase by $1, 26 for signature golf, 28 for the other categories. Noting that this is the first increase on the <coughs> daily card, card fees since 2014. Food and beverage, no change. The minimum will stay at the 800 that uh, it, uh, last year. As we look at our competitive set, each year we look at the dues and the fee structure relative to some of the club operations that are closer to us in location and those that offer somewhat similar amenities. What you see from this is that the value for the dues dollar here is really pretty good really very good for what you get, including the food and beverage menu. We also put together a comparison looking at some of the outside restaurants, and with that, keeping in mind that signature members, the signature members represent 90% of our members. For signature members, there's an automatic 10% off of the, uh, the price. When you take that into account, the prices are as good, if not better, for your protein entrees on the menu. And one of the things that, you know, with our restaurants, you will see is a tendency to change our menus more often than some of the outside restaurants. <clears throat> Again, you know, looking at all this, I really do contend that for what the membership pays, it really is a pretty good deal. Additional benefits, the True and Purvey program, happy to say that about 43% of our members took advantage of the True and Purvey program, the eligible members. Love to see that grow. One thing we do see is our members take advantage of the True and Purvey program far more than outsiders coming here. Which, again, that's the way it should be for us. I'd love to see all of our uh, members take advantage of some of the golf courses uh, that True manages and, and uh, uh, play there for uh, the discounted rates that they offer. With that, I open up for questions.